Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Hello. Hi. Hello. For joining us today. Uh, my name is uh, Joy Tsuhako. I am a professor in the sociology department and I advise the sociology club. Um, we are today going to have, I think, a really helpful conversation about um, as an introduction to majoring in sociology. So we have a few really great guests that are going to be, um, you know, being introduced to you and, and sharing some of their knowledge and resources with you. Um, I'm actually gonna let the club president, Brooklyn Kemp, um, take over with, with introducing everyone. So thanks everyone for being here. Hello everyone. Um, so yes, as uh, Professor Joy said, I'm Brooklyn Kemp. Um, I'm a second year at Cerritos College and uh, currently the president of the sociology club. Um, today we also have uh, Professor uh, Amy Halsgang, correct? Yep. Um, she's one of the uh, sociology professors as well. Um, I actually took one of her courses. I love her class. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then we also have uh, Jayani and Aiden, which is also um, a few of our, I guess you could say, um, club, our top people, part of our um, club. Um, and then we also have, is uh, Miss Sarah here as well today? Uh, yeah, she's going to drop in at about four o'clock. Okay, so then we'll kind of go into detail about who she is as well. Um, but yeah, um, if Jayani, Aiden, if you if y'all want to say anything as well, just introduce. Um, hi, I'm Jayani. I'm a first year at Cerritos College. Um, I'm a sociology major, and I'm the vice president of this club. Hi, everyone. My name is Aiden. I'm so happy to see a couple of new people, new faces. I'm really excited for you guys to join us today. I am the secretary of the sociology club, and this is my first year in service college as well. And I'm majoring in nursing. All right, Brooklyn, I think that does it. You want to hand it over to Dr. Hosting? Yes. Um, okay, so uh, Professor Halsgang is going to, she's from the sociology department chair, and she's going to go ahead and, um, you know, give us some information about majoring in sociology. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me today. So I um, I know that you're going to have a counselor, right, come and talk to you about the major and the classes and the requirements and all that kind of stuff. So um, I'm not going to talk too much about that um, in terms of the classes you have to take. But I do want to talk to you just a little bit about um, what I can, what can I do with a degree in sociology or major in sociology. So um, I don't know if any of you are, if you're able to, but if you can and you want to uh, maybe participate, maybe type in the chat some of the things that you, you know you can do with a degree in sociology. Maybe a, like jobs or careers or what are some things that you think about? Social work, good. Work in HR for sure. What else might you do with a background. You can be a professor, yes, community organization, for sure. You can also, a counselor, definitely, of all different kinds, you can be a, an academic counselor, you can be a therapist, um, all, the, all the different kinds of ways that, that counselors come into play. Um, you can go to law school, you can be a doctor, um, I have a, we have a former, a graduate, an alum of Cerritos who has an AA in sociology and he's an ER nurse at Long Beach Memorial. So he's a, an RN and is a nurse. And um, so Aiden, I think you said you wanted, or is it Jayani that wants to be a nurse? Um, so market research analysts, all sorts of things you can do. The best part about sociology um, with, a, with classes in it and education in it or a degree in it is that you can do anything. Um, Joy and I and our other colleague Matthew like to tell students that you can do everything and nothing um, because it, um, it's 
you know, when you're going to school for nursing or for an accountant, when you graduate, you are a nurse or an accountant. And with sociology, you don't necessarily graduate and become a sociologist. So you, one of the things that you can do is you can do anything with your degree. The important part is the skills that you learn along the way and how to articulate the skills that you learn. Things like critical thinking, like um, being quantitatively literate, right? Understanding research, understanding research methods. Um, one of the things that is going to be absolutely important uh, moving forward and should have been we might not be where we are today if we had more sociologists doing this, but a lot of diversity work, equity, um, directors of equity in corporations, every business, businesses are going to start meeting directors of equity and diversity. And sociology positions, we position you to be perfectly knowledgeable in these kinds of things, um, understanding what equity is, understanding how to then see that in a particular space, um, being aware of those issues. Um, so we've got a lot of alum, I've got a number of alum who are, who, like I said, are lawyers. Um, two Cerritos alums are, um, I know are immigration attorneys. They went to UCLA, one of them, and one of them went to Hastings um, up in San Francisco. So there's lots of things you can do. Again, it's like translating your skills that you learn in sociology into those things. Um, one thing that's very important um, for those of you that are, you know, because you, it's very broad, you can do anything with a degree in sociology. It's important then when you transfer, taking opportunities and actually even here at Cerritos, taking opportunities to do internships, to do volunteer work, find the things that you like to do, find the activities and the people you like to be involved with, the things you wanna do day to day and experience those things so that you know whether you want to do them. Um, so does anybody know any, uh, and I, I don't mean the people that we necessarily study in our classes, because um, we all know, Joy and I know that you all have memorized every single person that you've read in our classes. Um, ha ha. Um, do you know anybody that has a degree? <laughs> I'm not, no quizzes here. Do you know anybody with a that you know has a background in sociology, like a famous person? There are a lot of famous people that have backgrounds in sociology. Do any of you know any? No offense. Okay, so let Michelle me give you just, Obama? sorry? Michelle Obama, or was that law? I'm no, sure. well, she was both. That's the thing. Absolutely, Michelle Obama. Good job, Gianni. So she has a bachelor's degree in sociology, and she's a lawyer, um, and is just an awesome human being. Um, there's another person that you might have heard of. He actually has a degree in sociology from, I think, Howard University. Um, it's an HBCU, and then went on to get a doctorate in theology, someone named, you know, Martin Luther King Jr. He's a sociologist, um, was a sociologist. I was gonna say that one too. Yay, so there's, a, there's, we're in great, you know, you were all in great company. So, because it teaches us about learning about our world and the connections, right, between us and the larger social things and organizations and how we, how the social structure operates. So um, I think having a major in sociology is super flexible. Um, and it, in terms of social work, um, we, I, I've had a number of students who have gone on to social work, and one of the things that they are very glad that they did was major in sociology and then go on to get a bachelor's in sociology and a master's in social work, because then they have the social awareness, the connections that we learn in sociology, but also then as a master's student in social work, you learn about the therapeutic, the, the modalities of thera therapeutic things, and you learn about how to do that work there too. So, you know, you can be psych or social and go into social work. So, um, so that's, it's, you know, there, it's really broad. So what, um, what questions do you have for Joy and I? I mean, I'll give you a little bit about my background in terms of having a degree in sociology. So I have a bachelor's my master's and my doctorate are all in sociology. I loved it so much, I did not veer off. Um, I started out as a biology major and did that for two years, but um, so then switched to sociology and found my passion. Um, so are there any questions that you have? I mean, I know, yeah, so Joy just posted uh, in the chat about those um, professionals 
who are sociologists who do really amazing things. Um, and Joy, you had a whole social club event on just social work, right? Yeah, we had uh, one with a panel with social workers and another one looking at social work as a career path and also outlining the mental health worker program on campus. So there's a couple different videos. That's great. So Johnny, was it difficult transitioning from biology to sociology? You know, for me, it wasn't. Um, I wanted, when I, I went to school at UC San Diego and I wanted to swim with the dolphins and be a marine biologist. And um, I liked science. I liked the natural sciences, but I didn't like it enough to do as well as you had to, to work as hard in that um, as you had to um, at, that, at that school. Um, the irony, of course, is that I didn't mind working hard at all. Um, but when I found something that I loved, that's all I wanted to read. I mean, you know, I was taking organic chemistry and then I also had two sociology classes. I would have much rather spend my time reading sociology. In fact, I did, hence the, you know, C in, a, in uh, organic chemistry which I was happy about passing. Like that was like a, yay. Um, but I think that um, if you have your, my brain liked asking questions and liked answering questions in a scientific way. I was just, I just found that I liked to ask social questions as opposed to biological questions. Um, and sociology seemed just to make sense to me. So in terms of the scientific method that translated. Um, and so I had a strong background in the scientific method and how science works. And so it was applying it then to topics that I just really, really enjoyed. Um, so Gina asked if, Joy, if you or I have um, any other jobs for sociology before we taught at Cerritos College. Um, not specifically for sociology. I worked for an after school program for a while. While I was getting my sociology degree. And then while I was working on my master's, um, I worked in a corporate office. So um, they weren't specifically, you know, related to the sociology degree in terms of like, I didn't apply based on like their application to sociology is really just to get me through school. And I knew that I wanted to teach. So as soon as I was done uh, with my master's, I started teaching at Cerritos. <laughs> Yay. Um, my jobs too were like that. I, I worked um, in college to get myself through college. Um, so, you know, I worked, I, I worked in one of our libraries on campus at UCSD. Um, I worked at a bank doing, I was working part as like loan processing. So I learned all about the mortgage industry. Um, I worked in a biotech lab actually, while I was still a biology major. Um, and that was fascinating. But the thing that about sociology and um, I don't know how, um, how many of you can have talked about it this way, but once you start learning sociology, you see it everywhere. You can't take it off. And sometimes it's hard to turn down. And so your friends may look at you and go, oh, don't you ever stop? thinking about that, and you're like, no, I can't. Like, I just, it's hard to turn off your brain, your sociology brain. So every job you have, see, yay, sociology majors. Every job you have and everything that you're learning, wherever your job is. I mean, if, you know, like for Joy and I, we had to work to stay in school um, and to pay for stuff. And so um, we, I took in my environment and the way that I interacted in my environment and the way that I um, experienced things, I processed as a sociologist. And so it's always, it's always there, it's always thinking. And then you have this bigger expanse of knowledge base that you then take with you wherever you go and wherever you end up. Um, and Joy, I, I feel the exact same way about, my goal is to turn you all into sociologists even if you don't change your major, um, we get a lot of nursing majors in sociology. And so, although, you know, I would love to, you know, have more sociology majors, I think, especially for those kinds of professions, having some exposure to sociology is really important to understand family systems, family dynamics. Um, you know, when you send someone home from the hospital or from a doctor's office, understanding that they're in a family, they're in an environment, they have, a very distinct positioning. They may not be able to afford the meds that you're prescribing. So how do we 
I think that understanding how the world works for healthcare providers is really important. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, but you know, Joy and I secretly, that's our, we'd like that to be our either evil power or superpower, turning everybody into sociology majors. Um, so I think that the work, I mean, so then when I went to graduate school after my bachelor's degree, um, I did get, that's when I started teaching. And so I got to jump into teaching um, even before I finished my master's degree, which was which was a lot of fun. I was a teaching assistant for a, for a professor. Um, and so that, that was really great because I got to see uh, what I didn't want to be when I was a, finally got my own class, like what I did want to do and what I didn't want to do. And um, so that was that was really great. Um, so any other like what other questions do, would you do you have? So a question about internships. Um, and those we don't have an actual center, an actual office. Here at Cerritos for internships, we do have a career center, career services, and Tracy Yukita is one of the counselors, and she's phenomenal. Um, she's also part of our the Learning Career Pathways counselor in the career services for sociology. So Sarah is going to be talking about Sarah Chavez when she pops in at four. She'll be talking to you about the Learning Career Pathways, and Tracy Yukita is a counselor there, and she. They have lots of resources for jobs and for internships, but not specifically an internship office. So Gina, those are some things that when you transfer to a four-year school, most four-year schools have internship offices and through your departments, they have more outreach um, available for those things. Um, in the meantime, you know, volunteer, if you hear about volunteer opportunities, um, COVID has made it really a lot more difficult. Um, but there are still places to get that kind of information. Um, so Joy Aiden has a question of what um, has been the best or informative thing you've learned having a sociology major? Gosh, if I could sum it up in one phrase, it would be question everything. I think just that alone you know, it, it, it just opens up the, the, the door, right. To be able to probe everything. And that's part of the annoying bit, right. Is that, you know, why is this like that? And why is that like that? And does it have to be like this? And could we do it some other way? And, you know, those are all sociological questions that, um, that inevitably, like if you're, you know, critically thinking, I think, um, the, the questions arise anyway, and the, and the, the fact that people perceive it as annoying is really more just that you're disrupting people's reality, right? Because people just sort of accept things that they are the way they are, because that's how they are. But for a sociologist, we understand, no, they're like this because someone decided, like we decided collectively, right, to allow these things to happen. And so for me, those questions come up, especially around justice issues, right? And inequality. Um, like, why is it like this? It doesn't have to be like this. Are there alternatives? Is there something else that we can do? And so um, I think for me, the sociological lens has been really empowering. It's allowed me to answer some of those questions, to have some, some, some answers to those questions that are otherwise vexing, that otherwise maybe people just, um, again, accept uh, uh, as they are. For sure. I mean, I, I, I completely agree. Um, and so instead of just saying ditto, um, because I agree with everything Joy said, I think it makes, I think sociology makes us better humans. I think it makes us uh, more, uh, I think we have more empathy. I think um, there's actually been, a, there's a great article written about how sociology majors are more compassionate. Um, I think when we understand that every single one of us um, is who we are because of the world around us um, and that there are systems set up in place um, and it creates systems of, of, of equality, of inequality um, that put people in really different kinds of situations. I think it makes us more um, compassionate humans. Um, and I think it also helps explain a lot of things. I mean, I think, you know, like the questioning everything. So when you start questioning everything, then trying to figure out answers, um, I think it has helped. Um, I'm able to sort of see things uh, sometimes a little more clearly. Um, almost, it's almost, it's almost like, I don't know if any of you know, do you know what the, that little toy, the magic eight ball is? Where you, I don't know if they still have them. It's like Spencer's or something. You shake it and you ask it a question and it, you know, whatever it says, come back later. 
but I think it's, you know, sort of a crystal ball. I mean, sociology teaches us to see things that are not necessarily easy to see. Um, and, and to point it out, that's what, that's what people actually have a hard time with with sociology is that we point out things that are taken for granted, um, the taken for granted privileges, the taken for granted situations. And I think we, like Joyce said, we disrupt. Um, it's disrupting and it's uncomfortable, I think, when you're learning it but it is empowering and it's freeing. Um, and um, so I, to me, I can't even, uh, when I started taking sociology, I remember sitting in my first couple of classes just thinking, oh my gosh, this is amazing. I never saw that or you never thought about that before. So um, it's been, uh, I, you know, I took my first sociology class a long time ago. I'm not gonna even mention the year and uh, I haven't looked back since, so. Um, anyway, so hopefully Aiden, that answers a little bit for you. Maybe hopefully you've had some, some similar experiences. And so Gianni, a question of, um, have you met any people with a sociology degree that have gone into a field that isn't usually expected, such as technology? Um, well, so I said, like I said, I, um, a student, I'm a former student who got an AA in sociology and is a nurse. Um, in fact, a lot of um, nursing, um, some students, those of you that are nurses that are pre-nurses, you have to be taking classes just to apply to nursing school. And so some students end up taking an, enough sociology, they get an AA degree. So nursing, um, the medical field, um, I do, I have a former student who um, got an AA in sociology and is now pre-med um, and is applying to medical school. Um, and so I think depending on the degree, I think engineering might be a little rough to have a double major because of the units involved in an engineering degree, let's say. Um, but my niece is a computer science major. She um, is one semester away from graduating um, with computer science, which actually for being a girl, it's been a really, and a, and a gender scholar myself, it's been really amazing watching her go through this field that is unbelievably um, male dominated. Um, she has a minor in history um, but her brain leans towards sociology. Um, I, I'm going to take full credit because I was her nanny for the first six months of her life. So, um, but but I think there's there's as long as you know if you're thinking about something else, I, uh, you know other fields, technology, nursing, medicine. If you take your prereqs that you're going to need for um, whether it's for your bachelor's degree and you get an AA in sociology or it's a bachelor's in sociology and you apply to graduate school, as long as you get those prerequisites to go to those schools, you're good to go. Um, you know, so there's lots of different ways to navigate going into a field and then having a balance um, as well. So um, lots of different places that you can, you know, go and things you can do. So um, hope that helped answer that a little bit. Gianni, did that get to that? Was that enough alternative enough? Um, hopefully it was. So um, any other? I, um, as far as careers, um, the only one that comes to mind, and I'm just going to plug it because she's going to be on our career panel uh, <laughs> on the 7th. Um, she got her undergrad in sociology and her graduate degree in urban planning. Um, so now she works for an organization that's very um, sort of uh, justice oriented in the way that they, you know, they deal with, with urban planning. So, um, her name is Shannon Davis. She's actually my childhood best friend from kindergarten. <laughs> um, Yay. and, uh, yeah, so she'll be, she'll be joining us at our, uh, is that our next, not our next one, but our next, next one, uh, on March 7th. That's great. And yeah, I mean, urban planning policy. So there are actually, um, Maxine Waters, I don't know if that rings a bell to anybody, but Maxine Waters is one of our longest serving congressional representatives in the state of California. She is fierce fighter. Um, I think she, her district, she represents South Central. She's a fierce advocate for um, her district and for equality. And she actually has, she is a sociologist also. Um, so policy going into whether it's through the, the um, a rep, uh, an elected position and being a policymaker through um, elections or um, going into public policy, going into urban planning, going into um, lots of different kinds of fields that way, public administration. Um, sociology is a great fit. Um, and I think, again, it helps you notice about things that 
you might not know, have noticed before. Um, I read a great story about a, a civil engineer um, and she, I don't know that she has a degree in sociology, but she was using sociological insights. She started working for um, a city, a mid-sized city um, in the Southeast somewhere. And she realized that the bus stops were not near grocery stores. And it sounds really weird, but she said, you know, we need to redesign the bus routes because people who are doing the grocery shopping who are taking the bus don't wanna walk five blocks to get your bus after you go to the grocery store. Um, and so it's also an example of what happens when women start planning these spaces and when women's um, perspectives, um, when women of color start getting involved in the planning of these spaces, they come at things with a very different background. Um, and I think that's what sociologists, that's what enables us to start seeing um, are those kinds of things. Um, oh yeah, Robin Williams. Forgot about Robin Williams. So the late comedian, um, was a sociologist and his comedy reflected that so much. Um, I think, I don't know his actual background, but I like to think that George Carlin, I don't know if any of you are old enough to know George Carlin, but talk about a sociological insight. He was a comedian that was constantly about, you know, seeing the world sociologically. So, yeah. So Joy, who else today is coming? Sarah's coming? Uh, yes, and we have uh, Brittany Lundeen should be popping in in about five minutes. Oh my gosh, you are all so lucky. You have such amazing people today after me. Um, any other questions or thoughts or what are all you thinking of doing? What are you, what are you one of you mentioned nursing. Um, what are some of you thinking that you want to do? You're absolutely able to change your mind 15 times as long as you don't change your major. What are some of you thinking of, uh, of going into or you just don't know? Business, government, all good things. Mental health advocate, fantastic. Parents with kids with disabilities, that's amazing. They even have graduate programs in disability studies. So um, Maria, if you're thinking that, you know, in terms of that field, there's, there's graduate programs in disability studies now, which is kind of fun. Oh, hey, Brittany's here. Hello. Paralegal. Wow. Margarita, I, um, I had shared earlier and I'll, I'll share the link again to the Sociology Club YouTube page, but we did do a panel with professionals uh, who have sociology degrees and we had um, actually a couple paralegals on there. So you might wanna, you might wanna hear from them. That's awesome. Well, so any last minute, you know, last things for me, if you have any questions, do not hesitate to get in touch with me. I'm the chair of sociology. I mean, not that that gives me any sort of thing. I've just I've been here longer, a lot longer. <laughs> and so I, you know, it feels like forever. If you have any questions about things, Joy knows everything about the department as well. Let me know if you have, you know, thoughts. You're in some really great hands. Um, in terms of degrees, uh, sociology degrees, um, Another person that um, you're wondering, what can you do with a degree in sociology? This is kind of my segue, but I'll turn it back over to Brooklyn. Is, you know, Brittany, I think at one point was a sociology major. Brittany, did you finish your bachelor's in sociology? Yes. Yeah, yeah I have see? a bachelor's degree in sociology. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So anyway, I was, it was a pleasure to be here with you all. Um, I'll stick around for a little bit. If you have questions, you can just send me in the chat. And um, I know that Brittany's got tons of information for you. Um, so um, I hope to see some of you, those, those of you I had before, good to see your, your names and faces and squares, and I um, hope to see some of you in other classes. So have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you so much. Good to see you, Amy. You too. All right, Brooklyn, you wanna go ahead and segue us to our next guest? Um, yes, sorry, one moment. Okay, um, so next we're going to have uh, Brittany Lundin, which is our transfer counselor um, at Cerritos College. Thank you, Brooklyn. Um, 
again, thank you for the introduction, Brittany Lundin. Um, I am not going to have my picture up because I'm finding that if I put my picture up that my Zoom has been causing me problems today and kicking me out. So I apologize for not showing my face in <laughs> live. Um, but I just wanted to drop by and just let you know about some of the services the Transfer Center has to offer. I didn't want to take up too much of your time, but um, just know that we are here and available to assist you throughout your process and throughout your journey while you're at Cerritos College. Um, I think there's a couple of things that I really want you to kind of know, and that is whether you're in your first semester at Cerritos or you're getting towards your last semester at Cerritos College, you know, the Transfer Center is here to assist you in that process. Um, can how many of you are in your first year? Maybe do a thumbs up. If you're in your first year here at Cerritos. Okay. How about in your second year? Okay, we have some more there. <laughs> okay, we got definitely some mixes in there. And then uh, how many are, have any of you already applied to the university yet? Okay. All right, well, it sounds like it looks or it looks like I should say we have a lot of students who are continuing or just getting started at Cerritos. And so we do have a ton of different things that are available for you. Um, congratulations, Brooklyn, on that. I'm moving forward. Uh, so let me show you just really briefly. And again, I don't want to take a ton of your time, but I am here to answer questions. This is just a copy of our Transfer Center website or a look at our Transfer Center website. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put it in into the chat so you have it. Uh, if you come over here, you know, just so you know, we do have appointments available through the Transfer Center. Um, I think the biggest difference between us and general counseling would be that we're just more transfer focused. Uh, we don't look as much at the, uh, just the traditional AA degrees. We're focusing more on what you would need in order to transfer you to the university, whether that becomes part of a transfer admissions guarantee, if that's building out your educational plan and building in like the timeline for transfer, all of those kinds of things are what we're looking at. And so we do have scheduling an appointment. It is ultimately through the Navigate system. So I don't know if you've all seen that yet, but we do now have a Cerritos Navigate application or app on your phone um, that you can use, or you can log in through that like portal system and choose Cerritos Navigate. And that will allow you to schedule an appointment to see a counselor. And one of the reason codes that you can choose from is down towards the bottom, it'll say Transfer Center. Um, you can go ahead and specify that you're interested in a guarantee or private schools or out of state options, or maybe you just want to say you've been referred to the transfer center. If nothing else works and you want to come and see us and just put yourself down as a reason code of referred to the transfer center. Um, but we are here to assist you throughout your time. We do have quite a few general workshops that are coming up. We've had some earlier this semester, but we are continuing to have workshops. We have a transfer 101 that's coming out tomorrow. The introduction to the transfer degree, scholarship preparedness, uh, how to you know prepare for a transfer admissions guarantee, um, a session on Long Beach, Fullerton, and LA if you're interested in those schools, um, as well as USC. So we have a mix of different things that are going on. Um, the, the links will become available as the dates get a little bit closer, but we do have a bunch of stuff happening. And if you think you're going to be ready for transfer in the near future, then as we get closer to the end of the semester in April, we will have sessions that are specific to, are you ready to transfer to the UC? Are you ready to transfer to the Cal States? Come talk to us and we'll do kind of a presentation on what are we looking for? What are they looking for? And what you should be doing next. So all of this is listed under our homepage and specifically our transfer workshops. Um, for those of you who are at the point where you're applying, we have our application workshops. Um, right now, because students have already applied, we're looking at the next steps, we're looking at admissions decisions, and we're going to have a series of workshops that are going to come out called our Falcons Transfer On, um, which all of you can participate in. Hopefully it'll come out in the next couple of weeks with a flyer for you, which we have a bunch of different activities that talk about how you can transfer on to the university. Um, we do have a transfer academy. So for those of you who may be interested in going and maybe connecting to the Transfer Center a little bit more closely uh, from your you know, early point in time, you can actually join our Transfer Academy. Uh, this is more specifically focused on transferring to the UC. We are trying to build up our numbers of students who are considering the UCs. I think a lot of students don't consider the UC because of the fact that they think it's gonna to be too expensive. 
And so I just like to kind of put it out there that you don't know if you can afford to go to a school until you actually apply and apply for financial aid and get your financial aid award letters. So many students will actually go to the UC schools tuition free uh, due to a program called Blue and Gold. And Blue and Gold is basically says that if your family makes $80,000 or less a year, that they will help you cover the cost of your tuition at the UC system. Um, and so those are just, you know, that's just one example of a program um, that really you could take advantage of it and, and have an awesome opportunity to um, consider a UC campus. Um, so that's what we're doing as part of our Transfer Academy. We have all different kinds of workshops. We have a Canvas page that shows the different kinds of special sessions and special workshops that we have for students who are part of our Transfer Academy. And so if that is of something that is interesting to you, you can go to our Transfer Academy page down to the bottom and you can click here to join now. We have an orientation that's coming up in the next couple of weeks, but we have a little bit of everything. We have, you know, how do you prepare for your scholarships? Um, letters of recommendation sessions. We just had one last week on how to write a letter of recommendation or how to request a letter of recommendation, I should say, um, and things to keep in mind. How do you build what's called a brag sheet? So you have a listing of things that you've accomplished that you can keep track of so that when you start applying for scholarships or if you're applying to the university, you have, have that list available to kind of keep you on track and remind, remind you what you've done and all that you've accomplished. So those are just a couple of the special workshops that we have as part of the Transfer Academy. Um, and so I definitely recommend if you can, and if you're interested in, consider joining our Transfer Academy at Cerritos College. Um, we do have uh, Facebook and Instagram and other stuff. If you have not followed us or started following us now, you can do it so now. It's just Cerritos Transfer Center. Oops, I can spell. So Cerritos Transfer Center on Instagram. Currently, I'm the person who's behind that. So I do try to put up there if I see scholarships available or internships or admissions information about different universities or we have events coming up. Um, all of that's being posted onto our Instagram account. And um, I am available for direct message. If you have a quick question for me, you can definitely ask me through the Instagram account or you can email me. And I'll just put it here. It's easy to remember, transfercenter at cerritos.edu. Um, I respond to both sets of, of questions. So whether it's through Instagram or the transfer center email, I can respond back to you with some quick answers or tell you, come on in for an appointment. We're going to need more, you know, we're going to need a little bit more time than what I could put into an email. Um, we do have guarantees. So this is just to kind of put it out there for our transfer admissions guarantees. We have guarantees with these schools. You can see there's six of the UC campuses. We have three private schools as well as a bunch of out-of-state schools that all offer the possibility of a guarantee to the university. So again, these are really great opportunities um, for you to take advantage of. And they're not horrible. They're not like it's totally scary to get into. Um, Irvine and Santa Barbara have the highest GPA requirement, which is a 3.4. Davis is a 3.2. Santa Cruz a 3.0. And Merced and Riverside, somewhere between a 2.8 and a 3.2. And you can basically guarantee your space at these universities with those GPAs and some major preparation. So um, that's something that, again, we build into your transfer um, or your educational plan and into the Transfer Academy to kind of put that into play for you so that you know you have a guaranteed place to go. So I know I kind of jumped in, um, invited myself in a way to today's session. So I didn't want to take up too much of your time, but I am available for questions. If you have any quick questions for me before I pass it back over to Brooklyn. Um, so for these UC tags, all you have to do is finish the major requirements and maintain like, the GPA that's required. Yeah, pretty much what we're looking for is, you know, you need 60 units because we always need that for transfer. Um, if possible, we definitely want to finish your math and English early, but that's a kind of a given nowadays. And um, yeah, three point, you know, depending on which G, which school you're looking at, the GPA and the major, and you're good to go. And a lot of times major wise, it's just going to be sociology 101, 201 and statistics. So they're not asking you for a ton of extra stuff um, when it comes to the major. Oh, that's that's cool. That's nice to hear. Um, 
Can you start now or was this supposed to be done when we first started off as a first year? That's a great question. For the tag, you actually do it the year you're going to, the year before you transfer. So if you're going to transfer, let's say in fall of 2023, meaning you have one more year here at Cerritos, then in September, um, in September, we're going to um, have you apply for next year's tag. So it's not too late to do it. So it's definitely time to do it now. Okay, thank you. That was nice to hear. Yeah, not a problem. And like I said, if you join the Transfer Academy, you'll come in to see us. We'll build that into your educational plan. Or if you just want to um, come and see us through the transfer uh, appointments, we can work on that even if you're not part of the Transfer Academy. Oh, so we can also join the Transfer Academy now too. It's not too late for that either, right? No, there's, it's never too late to join that one. So you can join at any point. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And actually what I'll do is I'll give you guys the direct link over to the Transfer Academy page. And so if you decide that you want to, just scroll down to the bottom and hit the Join Now button. And then we'll move you forward from there. Okay. All right, well, great question. Thank you so much for that. Any other questions for me? Oh, looks like we have plenty of time for this particular sub part of this uh, presentation. So it looks like I have until four o'clock. So definitely ask me any questions that you have, if there's something you wanna focus on or I'm, I'm happy to assist. Mm, let me think of what else we can cover. if we want to do that. Um, I will say um, we do have lots of different things that are going on in the Transfer Center. If, if you don't see it on our homepage, if you go under events, we'll have different kinds of workshops listed here as well. We do have university representatives who have appointments available. Uh, Fullerton has appointments coming up. Davis has appointments coming up. Berkeley just ran out of their appointments, but they're planning to add more. So that, as well as if you wanna consider some, some of the private schools like Mount St. Mary or University of Laverne. So they actually have time when you can sit down or virtually sit down with a representative and talk about your uh, classes and what you need to do to be competitive for transfer to these institutions. Um, hopefully starting next year, we'll start doing campus tours again. Currently I have links here that show you how to get to the, the virtual tours that many of the universities are offering, but I am hopeful that next year we'll be able to actually offer uh, the possibility of taking you all on tours of the university, and that is free. So um, right now, the universities many times are doing what they call small group tours, where they can only take a group of like four or five people. Um, in order for us to have a bus and take students, we have to have at least 15. So you can always go on your own for a campus tour right now. Um, but for the group tours that we usually offer through the Transfer Center, hopefully we'll have that available starting next year. Uh, and then we'll kind of move our way forward. Okay. Let's see, is there anything else that you all would like me to cover or talk about? Um, okay, I have a question. Sure. Have there, been, have there been any people who have transferred to a really well-acclaimed school like UCLA or maybe an Ivy? I'm not sure if an Ivy is possible, but from the yeah. Transfer Academy or Transfer Center that you've met with? Oh, absolutely. And so I, that's a great question. And I think that, that one of the things that you can keep in mind is that really when you start at Cerritos College, you can start here and go anywhere. Um, there's a lot of different things that are out there that can assist you along the way. We do have a student currently over at Yale. Um, we have lots of students who've gone to UCLA, UC Berkeley, and we have a couple of students who've recently gone in the last couple of years to Stanford, um, NYU, Columbia, so yes, students have absolutely come from Cerritos College and gone to lots of different universities and, and many of which are um, highly acclaimed, as you say, uh, and very competitive to get into. So, you know, if you have a school in mind, when you come and see us, let us know what that is and we will help do what we can to help you um, to build that educational plan out to make it work for what you're planning to do and where you think you wanna go. For the Ivies, um... Is it a whole different process than, let's say, to a UC? Like, I know it's very competitive and it's very, um, it's very up there, but is it possible? Not possible, but do you? Mm -hmm, there sure. are some definite, there's some similarities and there's some differences. A lot of times what you're doing for the UCs is also the same types of classes. 
um, that you could use towards um, transferring to an Ivy League school or a more competitive institution. Um, their, their application process is a little bit different. Some of the schools that are out of state or Ivy Leagues like that will require that you have SAT or ACT scores, where the UCs and Cal States do not require SAT or ACT. So um, there might be a couple of additional things that come into play with the um, private schools such as Stanford and, and Yale stuff. They'll also have letters of recommendation requirements where students would need to get a faculty member or somebody who can speak on their behalf and recommend them to the university. So um, that comes into play a little bit also as a, a slight difference in the application process. But we do have help along the way for any of those applications, whether it's what we call the common application, the uh, UC application, the Cal State application, the Transfer Center does have workshops. We have drop-in sessions, we have computer lab sessions, we have one-on-one -on -one appointments, all of which can be used to help you um, develop your, um, you know, your process and, and plan and apply to the university. So that's there. Um, I did want to show you one other thing here. Thank you for bringing this forward, Brooklyn, for me. If you go to our, so you have a couple different ways of getting there. You can either go to the associate degree for transfer. Oop, here we go. Um, or you can go over here to transfer paths and then the associate for transfer. Either way, we'll take you to our page that actually will show you the classes that you can take that will go towards our transfer degree here at Cerritos College. Um, there we go. It's moving a little slow for me. So this shows you some of the classes that you can do. This prepares you uh, more specifically towards the Cal State University, but many of the classes do overlap with the requirements that are uh, needed for the UCs and private schools. So even though the focus for this particular degree is more on Cal State, it really goes in a lot of different directions and can help you fill in your units. One of the things that you do want to keep in mind is that when you're transferring, you need 60 transfer units. 39 of those are going to be made up of your general education classes. Um, 18 of those are going to be made up of your major classes. And so that doesn't quite hit 60 units, especially if some of the classes that you use towards your major will also be used towards your general education classes. So they kind of double up. Um, when that happens, though, it's really important that you know that you may need some elective classes to help you fill in and get to that 60 units. Um, I've seen many students who've gotten to the point where they think they're admitted and then they find out that they don't quite have a 60 and their admissions is taken back. So it's important that you really pay attention to how many transfer units you have and make sure that if you need to, that you add elective units in order to hit that 60 that you need for transfer. Um, Brooklyn, did you have a question? Um, not really a question, but like also just wanted to add like to what you're saying. Um, personally, um, I what I did as well is I used this curriculum guideline and then also um, as far as like students that want to possibly major in like whatever they want to major in, I would also look at like the, the school's curriculum guideline too for that major and maybe see if they match and then you can that also adds, you know, like to your electives or courses that you want to um, get done at Cerritos. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you can use this as one way of, of looking at the types of classes that you need. There's also a, a website called assist.org, and that's another great way to pull in classes to see if there's extra requirements that are needed in order to transfer to the university and again fill in rather than taking random elective classes. What you can also do, I know for me, I got my bachelor's degree in sociology, but I minored in human services. So sometimes you may also have another area that you're interested in studying. So rather than taking a bunch of random classes for electives, you can also take a class that goes towards a minor or an, another area that you're interested in, maybe not a double major, but maybe just something else that you want a smaller minor in. Um, and that will help fill in your units as well to hit that 60. So just so you know how to read this though, you're gonna need a total of the core classes. You get to take Sociology 101 plus two of the classes down here. Then you need two courses listed from list A, and then down here is one course listed from plan, you know, from a list B. So I'll put this one in here, and then we can take a quick look over at assist as well. All right, let me just, it lets me copy it. I don't know. It's not letting me at the moment, but um, so hopefully that will give you some ideas though of how to get there, but I showed you how to get there from the main page. So hopefully it'll let you in. 
Um, okay, so in addition to that, let me go over here to assist if it lets me. Let me close some stuff. Maybe that'll help me out. So from here on the assist website, we can go here and select Cerritos. Uh, good question, David. So you said if you plan on having a major, a minor, excuse me, can the class count towards your major and your minor? It is possible depending on how close your major and minor are. Um, a lot of times there are many times the classes that you need for one or don't always overlap for the other, but it is, yes, it's possible that it could count for both. Um, it would be good planning on your part. It just depends on how different your major is from your minor. Um, for mine with human services, that was, a, they didn't have any overlap of classes, but if I was to do a major in economics and a minor in business, then probably they would have a lot of overlap and I could use it for both my major and my minor. I hope that answers that question. Um, so in, on the assist website, again, I can select my school, which is Cerritos. I can select whatever school I'm interested in transferring to. Let's put in here Los Angeles for UCLA. I can click view agreements. And then I can put in here sociology, since we're doing the sociology club here. And then from there, it's going to show me the kinds of classes that I need. So for this one, it gives me information up here at the top saying that this is a highly selective major, which means it's more competitive to get into. And I got to work on making sure my GPA is as high as possible. But down as I move farther down on the list, you can see that on the right hand side, this is Cerritos, and on the left hand side is the university. So if I take Sociology 101 at Cerritos, that's going to count as the Sociology 1 over at UCLA. If I take the statistics class, either the Math 112 or the Psych 210, then that's going to count as my introductory statistics course that I need for the purposes of my uh, major at UCLA. Exactly. And statistics is going to come into play quite a bit. So um, for this particular major, there's not really a way to get around it fully. I know that for this degree, it says that you can kind of choose or not to choose it when you transfer. But in reality, to get your bachelor's degree and then even beyond that, you're definitely going to need multiple levels of statistics. Um, I think I took one in, in for my bachelor's degree, but I took an additional two when I went for my master's degree. So statistics definitely comes into play. And it's an important piece to kind of, to really try to do your best to understand and maintain that information. Comes back later. So this is just an example of how to use, um, yeah, this is just an example of how to use uh, the ASSIST website. You've got the transfer degree website, um, and of course the transfer centers website with a ton of different things listed there. So I'll open it back up to any questions that you all have for me. <laughs> it is exhausting to do the statistics class, but you know, I think the key thing in general is to make sure you find a good support system. I know for my uh, master's program in counseling, when we did statistics, we did study groups, and that was a huge help for all of us. If one didn't, person didn't understand it, the other person did, and when you teach it to somebody else, it just helps you to really sink it in better. Um, and so the support system is important, whether it's part of the club, maybe it's members of the club that are your support, or people in the class itself, or your instructors, your Yeah, I think, uh, I'm not sure if your audio just cut off, Brittany, but you were silent for a little bit. Oh no, where did it stop? Uh, you were giving advice about statistics at the end. Okay, I apologize. I'm gonna turn, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen because that definitely pulls my internet. Um, 
So I was saying that whenever possible, I recommend Psych 210 over Math 112. Um, and the reason why is because the Psych 210 has the SPSS listed in there, which is a software that you're going to need later on in some of your future statistics classes. Um, but technically, both will work for the purposes of transferring and getting your bachelor's degree. Um, but out of the two, I usually recommend Psych 210 over the Math 112. That's just my personal opinion, though. Um, all right, so with my internet kind of coming in now, is there any other questions for me before I step out? All right. Well, thank you all for letting me jump in today. I know that I wasn't originally on the plan, but I appreciate you making space for me to come in and talk further about the Transfer Center and the Transfer Academy and some of the things that are going on. So um, thank you so much for letting me join. Thanks a lot, Brittany. Take care. We'll have you back soon. Thank you so much. Bye. You. Bye. So we are going to have um, one other person join us at four o'clock. She's a success coach for the behavioral and social sciences majors. Um, and I'm thinking while we wait for her, maybe Brooklyn, would you like to share um, some of the events that we have coming up? And then I'll, I'll drop those flyers in the, in the chat as you um, discuss them. Uh, yes, yeah, sure. Okay, um, so we are going to actually have a few events um, coming up. We have a, an event, uh, it's called Careers in Sociology. Um, it's going to be March 7th, the same time, 3 o'clock to 4.30, and that's kind of where we get into detail about learning different career paths in sociology, uh, kind of similar about today, but we'll actually have people um, from specific career paths um, they'll be happy to include kind of their beginning and their process of, you know, how they became a sociology major and then what career path they took. Uh, I think we have people from social working and then um, what was it? Uh, the urban urban planning, urban planning, and then um, hopefully also um, possibly law and um, hopefully HR as well. Um, another one we have coming up is our game night where we'll be able to play games and also possibly win prizes. Um, just kind of like enjoying some time, um, learning a little bit maybe more about sociology. We we'll possibly have a bingo game referring to that. And then um, we also have another one. It's going to be uh, conversations in sociology where we'll also kind of go into detail about maybe just um, conversations about um, local issues that may be going on in the world. Um, and it's just gonna kind of have open dialogue with everyone about um, sociology. And then our last one is going to be um, called Our Futures, Visions in Sociology, where we kind of just go into detail about um, our, our future plans and um, what we, you know, we may choose to do later on next semester uh, as a sociology club. And if you guys have any questions, uh, we do have an Instagram page called Sociology Club Cerritos. I'll put that in the chat. And then also, if you guys would like, you can also um, email Professor Joy as well. I'd like to know, since we have a minute, um, how did everyone hear about this meeting? I recognize a lot of names from the two classes that I have right now. Um, did anyone else um, hear about this through through someone else? So everyone's currently enrolled in my own classes my classes. Uh, Gina has to go. How do you join the club? Um, if you could, you can private message um, Brooklyn with your email mm -hmm. um, and we'll send you the link to sign up on Falcon Sync or you can go to Falcon Sync and, and find yep. the sociology club there um, either way. Yep.
And so definitely, you know, assuming that you guys are all sociology majors, um, you know, Brooklyn, for example, is going to be transferring out next fall. Um, we currently right now even have some officer positions, but it's something for you to consider, um, uh, if not this semester, then next uh, next school year, um, to join the sociology club uh, and and take on a leadership position. Um, it looks really good on applications, and my understanding that in particular the UCs um, really like to see the extracurricular stuff. I mean, I think it helps at any level, right? But. Um, anything that you can do to, to make yourself more competitive, right? And of course, that means that you, you know, get to participate in like building out the club events um, and, um, you know, shaping it to be um, whatever, whatever you want. Um, and so it's flexible as well. Like, you know, Brooklyn and Jayani um, Aiden can tell you that um, we've sort of kind of customized the schedule to work for what works for us. Like last semester, we only did three events, I want to say, I kind of like took it slow, um, because things were so up in the air with COVID in particular, um, it felt like this semester was going to be a little bit smoother. But of course, right now, we're still a little disrupted because of Omicron. Um, but so, you know, the structure that we have right now is, re is really flexible, right? So the next group of club leaders can totally remake it and, and be however, you know, y'all want, want it to be like, if you wanted to go you know, do some more like um, things like get some, you know, practice with research methods, actually conduct surveys on campus, um, you know, do more, uh, hopefully, you know, as, as, this, as the year goes on, we'll be able to do more in-person events as well. One thing that we as a club historically have liked to do, um, certainly pre-COVID, right, was to do volunteer things together. Um, we also had hosted a, um, a clothing drive on campus, which was actually really successful, which where people just brought clothes, we laid it out and whatever people needed, they took. So, um, you know, there's all kinds of ideas as to, you know, as to what we can do with this club. It's very flexible. Um, and so I encourage you all to, to think about, you know, joining it. Um, I will in a minute uh, find the, the Falcon Sync link as well so that you can um, sign up on there so that you can receive um, any announcements, um, officially, you know, join, join the club uh, as well. Um, uh, and also, you know, stay connected for, for the future, like next semester. So I'm gonna, okay, cool. I just found the link. So I'll just, I'll just paste the link. Um, if you guys want to, you know, join, join the club and just like stay in the loop, um, then please, uh, please join us on, on Falcon Sync. That's where we can like collect all of your contact information to be able to send out right announcements and whatnot. Um, did anyone have any questions? or comments Has this, um, so far this first hour, has it been helpful to you? We're also open to taking suggestions for what else you would like to see from the sociology club. Um, obviously this, this semester we're set on our schedule, but uh, again, as I said, you know, next semester is, is flexible. Has been helpful so far to hear from Dr. Holzgang and to hear from um, Brittany. Yes, um, I love getting additional information that was needed uh, from Professor or Mrs. Uh, Lundin. I know even though I'm already in the transfer process, I feel like there's always you know more information that's needed. And um, I actually took Professor Holzgang when that was one of my first sociology classes. It was um, her course and then also yours. And both of those courses motivated me to change my major right after that. So um, if there's a lot of students here, I would suggest to take um, one of their courses. Um, they're really, really good. Social problems was one of my favorite. And then I took um, gender and women studies and all those courses. Yeah. Well, yeah, so I, I teach intro, social problems, as well as um, race and ethnicity in the US, which is social 210. Um, uh, we have, of course, lots of other great, great, great uh, faculty on staff, but 
um, I'm I'm one of the full timers, so I, I I teach more classes right than than some of the other instructors. Um, I know that one of my colleagues um, who's in my uh, doctoral program right now at Cal State Long Beach, I'm, I'm in a doctoral program for educational leadership. Um, someone who's in the cohort uh, for me, that is, they, they joined um, the program the year before me, um, teaches uh, Sociology 215. Um, his name is Professor Ryan Howard, soon to be Dr. Ryan Howard. Um, uh, I would uh, also urge you guys to consider um, taking a class with him. So it looks like our next guest has arrived. Brooklyn, would you like to introduce her? Yes, so now we do have um, Ms. Sarah Chavez. She is a part of our behavioral and social science learning and career pathways uh, success coach. Hello, hello, thank you very much. I'm sorry I'm a little late. I have other duties, but we got it done and we're here, that's what matters. So welcome, uh, thank you for joining us today. My name is Sarah Chavez and I am your success coach based on your major. So our top three majors are sociology, psychology, and AJ. Those are the top three. That doesn't mean there's not any more, but you would fall under what we know as the social and behavioral learning and career pathways. So what I'm here for you today is to let you know that I'm here to support you with any questions, any concerns. Maybe there's something you're confused about. Maybe you're looking for a job. Maybe something that you are maybe in need of that you haven't known who to reach out to. I'm now your success coach based on your major. I do want to let you know that everybody at Cerritos College as a student has a success coach. And we want to make sure that if you haven't met with the counselor yet, that you reach out to me and ask any questions. If I don't know the answer, I will find the appropriate resource or service or individual that can help you and guide you along the way with whatever it is that you need. So again, I am your success coach. I'm here to help you. I'm not a counselor, but I am here to make sure that you have what you need to be successful along the journey. And that you are getting in contact with those individuals that can provide the resources for you to continue to be successful during your time here at Cerritos. If you have questions or anything that you want me to maybe cover, Joy, um, that would be relevant to the students, depending on their major or that are here today, um, I can go ahead and answer any questions that you may have. Great, yeah, so we've reserved the remainder of the meeting, which is the next 20 minutes or so. Um, so I, if there's something, you know, sort of FAQs that you have, things that, you know, I think a lot of times with questions is that students don't know what they don't know. So they Most don't know definitely. what to ask. So, um, you know, if you, you could share a little bit. Um, Most definitely. So what I'm gonna go ahead and get started with is I'm gonna show you as part of the social and behavioral sciences learning and career pathway, what that means is that you have access to me. So when you have a, a question related in relations to maybe counseling or anything relevant to Cerritos College, you don't have to call the operator. You don't have to email a specific department. You can come directly to me and I will funnel it out to the correct department or assist you in booking an appointment. In being part of this LCP, the one benefit is that you have access to the Canvas page. I'm gonna share my screen. Let me know. This is something that you should all have access to as you have all designated as sociology majors. And when you go to your Canvas dashboard, you're gonna notice that you have this here that's called the SBS LCP. Again, this is not a class or a program, it's more of a support service and there's no assignments that are needed to be completed. So you should just be able to click on this here. And this will allow you access to different things. Number one is you're gonna have access to the calendar for the social and behavioral sciences learning and career pathway. So for example, today there was an event, every event that is available for the major or the LCP will be found on this calendar. So here you'll notice that those events are here. Today is the seventh. If you go here, here's the, the information for that event. So number one, you have all events on there. That's number one. Number two, you are going to be able to see modules on here that are here in the social and behavioral sciences. If you click on modules here, you are gonna notice that you have different modules, modules per major and also modules per department. So this first one is for how to's. As a student, you find that there's much information that we give you or, or like students say, you just throw so much at me. Well, here's where you can go to find how to. 
how to register for classes, how to find schedules, how to locate your fees, anything that's relevant to you as a student. Then you also have a module specific to your major. So today we're talking to sociology major students. You will scroll down all the way to sociology and you're gonna see other departments there as well. But this is a department for sociology. So you'll see their department website. You'll see a program mapper. You'll see an association that they're associated with. And you will also be able to see different flyers for different upcoming events that are relevant to the major. So I would advise you that you become familiar with your module and two, that you take advantage of the calendar because when I was a student, I know I had to click on four different websites where here you can see different events for financial aid, career services, transfer center, sociology club. And also, if you do not remember maybe my contact information, you can also email me through the Canvas, through the Canvas inbox as well. Okay. The other thing I want to let you know, anyone have questions about the Canvas group or page or not have access to it that they know of as, at, at this moment? Okay. If you do not have access to it, you can also email me later because you may you maybe haven't checked or uh, you know approve the page or the the tile on your dashboard. If you don't have access to it, please email me. Okay, I have an open door policy. You can call me, email me, or if you receive text from me, you can reply back to the text message, and I will also respond to that text message. The other thing you can do is here, we wanna make sure that you become familiar with the social and behavioral sciences learning and career pathway. I do apologize that there's noise. Let me close the window, my apologies. So you do wanna make sure that you become familiar with the social and behavioral sciences pathway page, because this is where you're able, you are able to see your success team. As I mentioned to you, every department now, every major now has a success team. And that success team is, comp is um, compromised of uh, counselors, faculty, uh, staff members from the Falcon's Nest. If you've never heard about the Falcon's Nest, the Falcon's Nest is what I like to call like the Trader Joe's or the Aldi's of Cerritos College. As a student, you are able to get uh, free groceries if needed, and also up to six items of clothing for free as a student in the Falcon's Nest to prepare or assist you while interviewing or in the process of attaining employment. So again, I put the website on the chat for you. You are able to click here and this page would be relevant to your LCP. Again, you are part of the SBS LCP and you will be getting bi-weekly emails from myself and the team with relevant information to the LCP or your major or any important or free resources. Again, here is the different majors that fall within this LCP as if you scroll down, you check on more majors. There is about 15 programs of study within this LCP. And as I mentioned, sociology is one of our top three majors within the LCP. So here you can click on sociology. It'll take you to the page and also relevant information to the major. So I invite you to one, become informed of what the sociology club offers and two, make sure you connect with the, the success team because we are here to support you, whether it be with, like I said, looking for a job, maybe you're struggling in a class and you just need that additional support and services. Please know that we can find you and get you free tutoring here on campus. You can also have virtual tutoring for free as a student. So our, our goal as a success team is one, to connect with you, right, via phone, email, or text, and two, for you to be able to open up and say, hey, I need help. As we like to say, it's okay not to be okay, but if you need help, knock on the doors, connect with the individuals that can provide the support with for you or with you, and also keep informed and stay informed with what is relevant to what is going to help you succeed in the long run when you are here at Cerritos. So here, if you click on success team, you are able to see everyone that is part of your success team, whether it be division deans, counseling um, department staff, instructional faculty, your success coach, which is myself. We have a social work intern if you're um, experiencing financial or, heart, uh, or housing insecurities. 
they can also assist you with that. We also have an academic success mentor. If you are struggling maybe with your classes or how to prepare to take notes, they can assist you with that. So there's many resources, again, that we can help you with or support you with. And please know that you can email me here and contact me and also see upcoming and important events that are relevant to the LCP. Okay, again, click on view upcoming events and you can see them there. Okay, anyone have questions or anything that they're unsure about? Does everyone have an edit plan with the counselor? You want to do a maybe show with an emoji of thumbs up or do you know what that what an ed plan is? Thank you, thank you. Oh, that makes me so excited. Okay, if you don't have your thumbs up, please connect with me. It's really important that if you do know that your major is sociology, that you do meet with the counselor to create an educational plan. What the educational plan does is it ensures that you are able to know what it is to take from the moment you started at Cerritos College to the moment you are done at Cerritos College. So just keep in mind, right, when you are either doing something in your personal life and you're trying to schedule something or maybe you're planning a party, there is a list of things that need to get done or you need to prepare for that. So think about an ed plan as that exactly. You are preparing this one-on-one -on -one meeting with the counselor and the counselor will ask you what your major is and then decide based on the school you're transferring to what it is that they recommend for you to take. And that way every semester you have a plan as to what you will register into. And if you also have questions, you can check in with our counselors during virtual drop-in to ensure that you know what to take moving forward to the point of graduation. Because as a success coach, your success is our number one priority. And how do we do that? We do that by connecting with you via email, text, canvas, and emails. Is there anyone here that has a question that maybe has tried to book an appointment lately with the counselor and has been unable to? Awesome. Are you all part of the soci uh, sociology club and you know what upcoming events are coming up? Thank you, Brooklyn. I appreciate that. And feel free to unmute. If you have a question, again, I have an open door policy. If you email me, call me or text me, I will respond to you within 24 to 48 hours. Maybe you um, want to ask a question after this. You can also message me. I'm available Monday through Friday. 8 to 4 30 and i'm always willing to assist you and support you with whatever questions you have again thank you professor joy for um not only being here but for presenting for giving me the space and the time to share uh the lcp information with the students please please do know that we know that times get tough and that you may feel that there's a disconnect between you and the, the college or your instructors do not feel that way. We are here, we see you, we hear you, we value you, and we appreciate that you select Cerritos College during this time. And thank you for showing up every day, whether it be um, remotely, and knowing that you are valued here at Cerritos and that we care. And again, please knock on doors, reach out to those people that you need uh, assistance and support with. And again, the number one thing that I find students will say, well, I don't want to reach out for help because I don't want to take away from other students or, you know, I'm, I'm ashamed to ask for help because I was taught not to ask for help. No, I can tell you from being an alumni here at Cerritos College, first generation college student coming from low income myself, I was kind of taught that as well. But you know what? It's good to ask for help because maybe you're one in 10 that will ask for help and will always make sure that others that may not ask are being answered the question that they're looking for. And again, trust me, like I said, the Falcon's Nest is there to assist you and support you with free resources, um, free groceries. We have different vendors that do come in to the campus and provide groceries to the campus. And for you to be able to take advantage of this is important because it's free for you as a student. All they ask is for your student number and then someone takes you in the Falcon's Nest and get the groceries that you need. I do want to let you know that it's important that you take advantage of these items because these were not there available for free before. And when I was a student, I know I needed groceries. I had food and housing insecurities and I didn't seem or find a place to go to. Well, guess what? 
we're here for you. We want to make sure that you know that and hear it loud and clear. So again, I'm your success coach and my goal is for you to be successful from beginning to end because life does happen and it's important to know that you can connect with someone here at Cerritos College. Thank you so much, Sarah. It's really great. You know, I really appreciate all the support that you provide our students. Thank you. Thank you, Joy. And again, I know that um, it may be a lot of information. I know you've been here since three o'clock and, um, you know, we, a lot of people get zoomed out, but, you know, take the time to care for yourself, to reach out. I know Professor um, Joy um, does such a great job of, you know, I, I like to say you can present or you can be a presenter. She really presents and really cares about you guys and the major and everything she does. She really wants you to know that we're here for you, like I said, you know, and again, if you have questions, there's no silly questions. Questions are free. So we're here to always answer them. Again, if right now is not the right moment for you to ask, or you feel like you don't, you don't feel comfortable asking, please reach out. Um, Cerritos Cares, thank you for posting that on the chat. Cerritos Cares is there for you to assist you. We have the loaner laptop program. So currently, if you're utilizing your personal laptop, but you have not heard or heard of or were aware of our loaner log lap, sorry, loaner laptop program, it's a mouthful. That is something that again is free to you as a student, you are able to get a loaner laptop and also a Wi-Fi or hotspot. So what I like to recommend to students is when you are taking classes here at Cerritos College, keep in mind, right? Financial impact is huge for anyone. And when you have your own laptop, if something happens to your laptop, that means that you would have to, of course, out of your own pocket, have to fix that laptop. Well, at Cerritos, if you have a loaner laptop program and there's an issue with the laptop, you can always, you know, reach out to us again and then get a different laptop and that laptop be taken care of. So again, we are trying to make sure that you know that every resource that is uh, maybe needed or that is required for you to be successful as a student is provided to you here. We also have you, um, uh, we're able to offer you rented books or you can come to the library and sit in the library and rent the book out for a certain time so that you can sit there and make copies or write down your notes or study. It's really important that you take advantage of, again, free resources, the, li li the library, the tutoring, your laptop, and groceries as well. And then again, if, if you're looking for other programs to be part of or join, we do have the Puente program and the Emoja program, which allow you to be part of an English class and a counseling class and also get free books for the uh, component of the English class and also be part of the Puente and Emoja program. Again, if you are maybe receiving financial aid, that's great, but the Puente and Emoja program can assist you with that as well. And you can get that in addition to financial aid. So again, my goal as a success coach is to keep you well-informed of all the services available here at Cerritos College. Oh, thank you, Brooklyn. You're part of the Emoja program. Awesome. Are you taking the class this semester? If you don't mind unmuting. Yeah, I took them actually my first uh, my first semester, um, and then I also took the success counseling class as well, um, connected to Emoja, and yeah, it was a really great program. Um, also, I think, I, I'm pretty sure you're probably going to also add, but EOPS as well is a good resource um, system. Most definitely. Thank you so much, Brooklyn. It's awesome to have, I'm going to tell Dr. Hill, she's going to be so proud of, of me because I'm also the success coach for the Emoja program and the Puente program. Mm -hmm. Again, um, she did mention EOPS. I am a product of the EOPS program myself. I started here at Cerritos through the EOPS program and the EOPS program allows and is a program designated for um, students that are either low income or experiencing financial difficulties. If you don't know about the EOPS program, I also invite you to uh, learn about them. Because again, we know books and things are expensive, but the EOPS program, the Emoja program, the Puente program assist you with that in addition to financial aid. So keep in mind, you know, there's a lot of things that can help you and support you in addition to financial aid. So just, it's a great, um, oh, thank you, Aiden. EOPS is a great help. They sure are. They also have their own tutors. They have their own support system. So again, 
as your success coach, it's my job to know all the good things that we can help you with and all the services we can help you with because your success is important. But again, we have found and they've done research that in order for students to be successful, you yourself either have someone you study with, you, you get along with and you say, hey, let's study together. Well, your success team is here to do that. We're your biggest cheerleaders. And you're part of the sociology club. So take advantage of other resources that not only come with being a student, but also having Professor Joy here support you along the way. Um, make sure that you know that it's important to network. Networking is really critical because you may not think of it now, right? But three years from now, you're applying for a position and you've been part of the sociology club. They can write a recommendation letter for you. They can assist you with that. And all that is amazing on your resume, on your applications. The, the sociology club also does a lot of great um, community service. I know that they've... Uh, volunteered in different occasions. That is a plus. I know a lot of students are looking, well, how do I become involved? Become involved by being active in the sociology club. It's important that you ask the questions that are going to be answered here in an intimate setting because they are part of this club because they're in the major. And the one thing I do want to say that I've learned from being in other presentations with Professor Joy is just because you major in sociology doesn't necessarily mean you'll go into sociology, but that is your foundation and that's where you start. And there's a lot of different opportunities. I do um, want to promote also that the sociology club is going to be having some events later on in the semester that have either a career panel or talk about majors within the sociology field. So again, take advantage and trust me, it's important that you get involved, whether it be via Zoom, whether it be that you're asking questions and that you're able to add these um, networking and um, important entities in your Indeed, in your resume and your application. So that really does make a difference even when they ask you in like admissions applications, how have you been involved? And being part of the sociology club is being involved because you're in the know, you're supporting a club and you're being an advocate for those students that are looking to major within the sociology field. And that is huge because like Brooklyn, right? Brooklyn's here, she's part of the and I myself am part of EOPS and was part of EOPS, but it's your experience that really makes a difference for other students when they're trying to either go into a field or make a decision that will impact the rest of their lives. Okay, thank you so much for your time. I know it was a lot. I know I came in really rushed. I jumped from one meeting to another, but again, I'm an open book as your success coach. I'm here to support you. Please never hesitate to reach out to me. I'm going to go ahead and add my flyer in the chat for you. We do have about five different academic counselors that fall within this LCP. Um, one of them being Dr. Hill, who is also the lead for the, Puente, for the Emoja program. And if you'd like to know a little bit more about Puente or Emoja, please do reach out to me. I am the success coach for that um, program as well. And again, they have a lot of different free resources that they give out to you. So please take advantage of them. Anything else Joy, that you think I've missed or that I added in other presentations? I think you were really great. Yeah, definitely encourage people to follow up with you if they have any, any other questions. Sarah is really, really helpful. Don't be afraid to reach out. Yes, most definitely. And if you want to know how many sociology students there's currently at Cerritos College, there is about 269 sociology majors as of today. I ran the report this morning. I like to give numbers because you're like, hey, is it me? No. Well, guess what? You have 269 other friends, buddies. I call them family members because they're, they're part of your major. Um, they're running around and they're looking for you to reach out and say, hey, join the sociology club. So um, you know, when you see individuals, it's word of mouth is the best way to help others. And like they say, check in on others. I'd also recommend that you do that with those students in your classes, connect with them and invite them to a sociology club meeting. It's really important to get connected. Thank you once again for your time. Thanks, Sarah. Thank Bye. you. Have a good day. No problem. And I'll stay, I'll stay by, stand by if you have any questions. If you guys want to add anything in the chat, I'll stick, I'll stand by till you guys end if that's okay with you. Okay, cool. Yeah. Thank you. Fine. All right, Brooklyn, I think you had one, speaking of volunteer, um, something to share. 
with students? Um, yes, so uh, we have a February uh, food distribution at Cerritos College. It's gonna be on the 23rd, Wednesday at 8.30 a.m. to 11.30. Um, they're always looking for volunteers. Uh, so I'll go ahead and put the website down in the chat if you guys are um, available. I actually did it, I think last year um, and volunteered. It was really, really great turnout. Um, it's always just open for the community. If anyone is in need of any food, we uh, package a bunch of boxes and then uh, give them to families in need. So um, it would be great to have more support and volunteers if you guys would wanna go and do that. Yeah, and I'll just add for those of you in my social problems class, um, helping out at that event will also count as a social change experience opportunity. Um, and since it you know requires three hours of your time and like an in-person event, I do offer an extra 10 credit points um, for, uh, for participating in that. So I know that a lot of you are here in this meeting uh, because this also qualifies, but it's just something, something to consider um, if you have the time to support and or if you know anyone who might need those resources, right? Who, who might need that extra box of, of groceries um, to let them know that the college is offering that to the community. All right, well, I hope this conversation today was helpful. You met the chair of the sociology department, you met a transfer counselor, and now you know your success coach as a sociology major. Um, so hopefully you feel the love from this support team um, that is here to, to get you through your time at Cerritos College and, and send you off to go conquer the world and, and make it a better place. So um, we'll be back right at another sociology meeting in a couple of weeks. I dropped all those flyers um, in the chat earlier, uh, as well as the link to find us um, on Falcon Sync. And I think Brooklyn shared that link as well to our, our social media, right? Our Instagram page, yeah. Sociology Club Cerritos. Follow us there so that you can stay connected to our events uh, and then other, other uh, you know, other volunteer type things that, that we may be sharing as well. Um, Sarah wants to remind you to check your Canvas website, uh, your, your Canvas page for events. Um, so are there any questions or comments before we close out today? Like Sarah said, I know it's a lot to digest, like you just got a whole lot of information, but hopefully you're processing that as love and support. Um, and, and if you, you know, miss any bit of this one, we're going to post it to the um, Sociology Club YouTube page, just so you can always go back and, and, and review some of that content. Um, and then you know how to reach uh, all the folks that, that, um, that you've connected with here at this meeting. So don't be afraid to reach out. I'm going to re reiterate that. Um, from Sarah that, you know, lean into all of the supports that the college offers, ask questions, reach out, you're not alone, we're here to support you. All right, everybody, until the next time. Thank you so much. Take care. Oh, oh, I, had a, yeah. oh. I just had a question. Um, so for the sociology club, if I wanted to join, would I just end up like going to the meetings or would I have to sign up for it? Um, you can actually just send me an email and I'll be happy to go ahead and add you just to our roster uh, on Falcon C. Okay, let me just get your email down. Um, did you put it in the chat or? Yeah, I can send you my email, um, but you can also send me yours as well if you guys, and, and I can just add you guys to the uh, Falcon C. Okay, I have your email. Okay, I'll, I'll send you the, I'll send you my email right now then. Cool. All right. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah. And I just um, repasted the YouTube page link. Lots of other helpful videos on there regarding careers, regarding transfer, social work, um, and some conversations, some more in-depth conversations about um, public sociology as well. And we'll continue adding to that page. So bookmark it, right? Even if you miss the meetings, you can always go back to see, you know, what, what we've been up to, to to benefit from from the conversations that we hold here. All right, any other questions? All right, well, everybody have a good night. Take care. We'll see you soon. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for joining. Thank you. Bye. Bye.